Welcome to a new webinar from Complimarket, the Munich-based company focusing on enabling manufacturers and suppliers to be compliant while being able to save their time and money and expand their markets. Today, we handle a critical topic to the international industry that can get companies out of business if they do not react with it in a correct way. The solution to PFAS reporting and restriction in articles in EU, USA, and others. We were just worried about 12,000 PFAS substances reporting requirements in some USA states. Now we will have reporting obligations for imported articles in all states in the USA under TSC Section 8, A7, in addition to the expected restriction of PFAS in the European Union and some American states. In this short webinar, we will have an overview about PFAS, its uses, and most important regulations in the EU and the USA, which will require you to report or restrict 12,000 PFAS substances. We will focus only today on PFAS in articles. The problem with FAS. FAS are very persistent in the environment. Risks of increased exposure for people, plants, and animals. Estimated 4.4 million tonnes of FAS could end up in the environment over the next 30 years without action. Why PFAS important? PFAS per and polyfluoroalkyl substances are a group of man-made chemicals that have been widely used in various industries due to their unique properties. These properties make PFAS valuable in a range of applications and products. Some of the reasons why PFAS are used in industry include chemical stability, PFAS, are chemically stable, which means they do not break down easily under normal conditions. The stability makes them suitable for applications where resistance to degradation is essential, such as in extreme temperature conditions or when exposed to harsh chemicals. Water and stain resistance, PFAS, are highly resistant to water and oil, making them ideal for use in coatings and surface treatments that require water, stain, and grease repellency. Examples of such applications include non-stick cookware, stain-resistant carpets and fabrics, food packaging, and waterproof clothing. Fire resistance. PFAS are used in firefighting foams due to their ability to form a thin, stable film that rapidly spreads across the surface of a flammable liquid, smothering the fire and preventing its reignition. Temperature resistance, PFAS, can withstand high temperatures without losing their effectiveness or breaking down, making them suitable for use in high temperature applications such as electronics manufacturing, where they can be used as heat transfer fluids, surfactants, or processing aids. Lubrication, PFAS, have excellent lubrication properties, making them useful in applications that require reduced friction and wear, such as aerospace and automotive parts, gaskets, and seals. Electrical insulation, PFAS, have low dielectric constants, making them valuable as electrical insulators in applications such as wire and cable insulation, or as coatings for printed circuit boards, where PFAS is used. One non-stick cookware, PFAS, such as PTFA polytetrafluoroethylene, are used to create non-stick coatings on cookware, making them resistant to sticking and easier to clean. Two stain-resistant carpets and fabrics, PFAS-based treatments, are applied to carpets, upholstery, and clothing to make them resistant to water, oil, and stain. Three waterproof clothing, PFAS-based coatings and treatments, are used in waterproof clothing and outdoor gear to provide water repellency and breathability. Four food packaging, PFAS, have been used in grease-resistant coatings for food packaging materials, such as fast food wrappers, microwave popcorn bags, and pizza boxes. Five firefighting foams, aqueous film-forming foams, AFFF containing PFAS are used to extinguish flammable liquid fires, especially in aviation, military, and industrial settings. Six 
electronics manufacturing, heat transfer fluids, PFAS, are used as cooling fluids in electronic components like transformers, capacitors, and heat exchangers, where high thermal stability and low electrical conductivity are required. Surfactants, PFAS, are used as surfactants in the semiconductor manufacturing process, especially during the wet etching and cleaning steps to help remove residues and contaminants from the wafer surface. Photoresist components, PFAS, are used in photoresist materials for photolithography, a process used to create patterns on semiconductor wafers. The chemical properties of PFAS help ensure that the photoresist adheres well to the wafer and can be cleanly removed after exposure and development. 7. Aviation and Automotive Lubricants PFAS are used in specialty lubricants, such as grease for aircraft and automotive bearings, where high temperature stability and chemical resistance are critical. Hydraulic fluids, some PFAS-based fluids, are used as fire-resistant hydraulic fluids in aircraft and other high-performance hydraulic systems that require high temperature stability and low flammability. Gaskets and seals, PFAS, are used in the production of gaskets and seals that require chemical resistance, temperature stability, and low friction. These components are essential for maintaining the integrity of engines, fuel systems, and other critical components in aviation and automotive applications. Eight metal plating and processing, surfactants, PFAS, are used as surfactants in metal plating baths to help ensure uniform plating and prevent the formation of unwanted surface defect. Wetting agents, PFAS, are used as wetting agents in metal processing to reduce surface tension, improve the wetting of surfaces, and enhance the adhesion of coatings or treatments. Mist suppressants, PFAS, are used as mist suppressants in electroplating and other metal processing operations to help reduce the formation of airborne mists which can pose health and environmental risks. Nine paints, varnishes, and sealants, additives, PFAS, are used as additives in paints, varnishes, and sealants to improve their durability, chemical resistance, and water repellency. These additives can help protect surfaces from weathering, staining, and corrosion. Surface treatments, PFAS-based surface treatments, can be applied to a variety of materials, including metals, glass, and plastics, to provide water and oil repellency, stain resistance, and easy-to-clean properties. Protective coatings, PFAS, can be used in protective coatings for industrial equipment, machinery, and infrastructure to resist corrosion, wear, and the effects of harsh chemicals. 10 cleaning products, some PFASE are used in specialized cleaning products, such as stain removers and carpet cleaners, due to their ability to break down grease and oil. PFAS related regulations considering 12,000 substances. 1. TSC, a Section 8A7 persistent organic. 2. PFAS in main reporting requirements. 3. PFAS in Minnesota. 4. A U expected restriction of PFAS. Substances under scope. Around 12,000 substances. You can find the list of substances under this link. comtox.epa.gov slash dashboard slash chemical dash lists slash phasmaster. Reporting requirements for PFAS in imported articles in USA under TS, see a Section 8A7. What is T? See a Section 8A7. Signed into law on December 20, 2019, within the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2020, NDAA PL 11692, requires manufacturers of PFAS since January 1, 2011, to report information. Chemical Identity and Molecular Structure Categories of Use Total Amount Manufactured or Process Byproducts from Manufacture or Disposal 
health and environmental effects, exposure numbers and duration, disposal methods, scope of covered entities. 1. Rule applies to anyone who has manufactured, including imported, APFAS for a commercial purpose since January 1, 2011. 2. Only manufacturers, including importers, are covered. 3. Importers of PFAS in articles are considered manufacturers. J. When are reports due? Reporting forms will be due 18 months following the rule's effective date. Exception. For small article importers, defined at 40 CFR 704.3, forms are due 24 months after the rule's effective date. Data format. Information should be submitted using a ECD harmonized templates. These templates can be accessed online and the EUC LID6 software can be used for exporting data in the correct format. Alongside the template, full study reports or underlying data as support documents should be submitted. If an OECD de-harmonized template isn't available for certain data, manufacturers must still submit the relevant information. Electronic reporting requirements. General requirements. EPA mandates all data be submitted electronically. This parallels 2013 requirements for other TS, CIA data, refer to 40 CFR 704.20E submission portal. All data must be submitted through PA's Central Data Exchange, CDX. CDX is the main portal for electronic data reporting to EPA. Chemical Information Submission System, CISS, a web-based tool designed for TSCA submissions housed within CDX, facilitates user-friendly applications for constructing and submitting data packages securely, can capture detailed data, and allows attachments of various file types. C. ISS is found under Submission for Chemical Safety and Pesticide Program, CSPP within CDX. Users familiar with TS, CS submissions via CDX will recognize CSPP flow in their account. Rule-specific reporting tool. APA is designing a specific tool within CISS for these new requirements. Will be available before the reporting period starts. C unit I I I on deadlines. Electronic reporting cuts down reporting burdens, cost, and time. Enables intra-organization sharing and easier record keeping. Many potential reporters might already be accustomed to CDX electronic reporting. For newcomers to CDX EPL, offers guidance and a help desk. Article importer reporting requirements. Company and plant site information, all info as per 705.15. A must be recorded. Chemical specific information, common slash trade name, chemical identity, molecular structure. If identity unknown, provide a generic name slash description. Categories of use, industrial processing and use information, report type of processing or use operation. Industrial activities sector, report the sector of industrial activities. Sector-specific function categories indicate function category of each reported sector. Consumer and commercial use information. Designate the product category for consumer slash commercial use. Product-specific function categories designate function category for each product. Consumer or commercial use designation. Specify if it's a consumer, commercial use, or both in or on consumer products intended for children, determine if PFAS is present in slash on products for children age 14 or younger. Estimated maximum concentration for consumer slash commercial products. Report the estimated concentration of PFAS. Additional article data reporting. Submitters can provide any extra information as requested under 705.15, including supplemental attachments. Imported Article Production Volume Reporting Requirements 
Report production volume for each calendar year since January 1, 2011, if PFAS was imported in an article. Report to two significant figures of accuracy. Specify unit of measurement to be used. Designate if imported PFAS was ever physically present at the reporting site. PFAS in Maine, Public Law C, 477. In July 2021, Public Law C, 477, an act to stop perfluoroalkyl and polyfluoroalkyl substances pollution, LD 1503, 130th Legislature, was enacted by the Maine Legislature. This law aims to address the issue of PFAS pollution in the state. Manufacturers of products with intentionally added PFAS must report the presence of PFAS in those products to the department beginning January 1, 2025. Prohibition on the sale of carpets or rugs and fabric treatments containing intentionally added PFAS also begins on January 1, 2023. Starting January 1, 2030, the sale of any product containing intentionally added PFAS will be prohibited in Maine unless specifically designated as a currently unavoidable use by the department. Manufacturers may request an extension of the reporting deadline if they are unable to provide sufficient information or are uncertain about the presence of PFAS in their products or components. The department has the authority to grant extensions on a case-by-case -case basis. Required information for reporting. Manufacturers must provide the following information as part of their submission to the department. 1. Brief description of the product. 2. Purpose of PFAS in the product and product components. 3. Amount of each PFAS reported by Chemical Abstract Service Registry Number. 4. Manufacturer's name, address, and contact person. 5. Additional information is determined by the department. Preliminary reports may be submitted to the department electronically by email to fastproducts at maine.gov. PFAS in Minnesota. PFAS proposal in Minnesota. Ban on non-essential use. Starting in 2025, Minnesota will prohibit the sale of many products with intentionally added PFAE staff. This list includes carpeting, cookware, children's products, cosmetics, dental floss, menstruation products, and ski whack. Manufacturer disclosure. Manufacturers are required to disclose that the products they sell in Minnesota contain PFAS. Complete ban by 2032. By 2032, no product with intentionally added PFAS can be sold in Minnesota unless state officials decide it's essential for the health, safety, or the functioning of society, and there are no reasonable alternatives available. Limited exceptions. The Minnesota bill does carve out some limited exceptions for the use of PFAS, including medical devices and firefighting foam used at airports and oil refineries until there are safe alternatives. You can be punished any time under other environmental regulations in Minnesota. PFAS restriction in the EU. Proposal for the restriction of PFAS substances. A CHA dossier content, schedule, and implications. The ban on PFAS substances impacts approximately 12,000 substances in total, which includes all 38 fluoropolymers. Intention, a comprehensive ban has been implemented on all approximately 12,000 substances affected by PFAS. Scope, the ban includes the prohibition of production, use, and market placement, including import of PFAS substances. Reason, PF AS substances are partially toxic and have carcinogenic properties. They are also environmentally harmful and persist in the environment, with depolymerization only occurring under extreme conditions. In addition, their degradation in the stratosphere strongly contributes to ozone depletion. However, it is worth noting that fluoropolymers, which fall under the category of PFAS, are considered polymers of low concern 
according to OECD criteria. They have been found to have no significant effects on humans and the environment. The CHA dossier content, schedule, and implications. Since 2020, the preparation of AREACH restriction dossier has been underway for PFAS substances. On January 13, 2023, the completed PFAES restriction dossier was submitted to the European Chemicals Agency, ECHA. On February 7, 2023, the PFAS restriction dossier was published on the homepage of the European Chemicals Agency, ECHA. The final public consultation for the PFAS restriction dossier commenced on March 22, 2023. The final public consultation for the PFAS restriction dossier concluded on September 22, 2023. The publication of the regulation regarding PFAS restrictions is expected to take place in the first quarter of 2026. A complete ban on all PFAS substances, including fluoropolymers, is scheduled to be implemented in 2039. What to do now? What to do now? Now we go to the solution. Check your bill of materials for high and middle risk materials for PFAS. Now we start doing the material risk assessment. To conduct material assessments, it is permissible to use technical judgment as some substances are not expected to be present in certain materials. A. G. Organic substances and metals. Such technical judgment may be based on technical information available in the electrical slash electronics industry and slash or literature research on the materials used in articles. For parts that is low at risk, you can exclude them from laboratory testing. When the risk is middle or high, then you can go for your next step and ask suppliers about declaration about the presence of substances. For sure, not all suppliers will answer you, but it is one of your steps to build your risk matrix according to IEC 63000, as you can see here. Our company can help you here by our new innovative software to calculate the material risk according to IEC 62000. 321 standard of your bill of materials. It is very simple. You upload your bill of materials and the risk of presence of PFAS in each part of your bill of materials will be assessed. The module can also check the material risk for other regulations like ROS, REA, CHSV, HCRE, ACHXXV, II, Persistent Organic Pollutants Regulation, and T. I see a section 6. Please write us an email at complimarket at complimarket.com and book your call with us to understand more. How can we solve PFAS problem for your company and save you hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars? And now we can determine the level of documents to be collected from results of the combined risk matrix. For high risk, you should collect contractual agreement or supplier's declaration according EN 62474 plus lab testing or audit. Audit according to IEC 63000 and IEC 62476. For medium risk, you should have contract agreement plus supplier's declaration or you consider it as high risk. For low risk, it is recommended to have contract agreement or general supplier's declaration. This matrix can help you to reduce your time and efforts in collecting compliance documents from many suppliers. Now you should have reduced the number of parts of high risk tremendously. What is the best way to test PFAS? Total Organic Fluorine Screening Provides a holistic view about PFS by quantifying total organic fluorine. Faster and broader than specific PFAS analyses. Good preliminary screening tool. It uses combustion ion chromatography, CIC and ion chromatograph. If the results is positive, we go for extraction methods and liquid chromatography mass spectrometry, which are expensive methods. If you find fluorine and the total risk is high, you should now go for extraction methods and then liquid chromatography mass spectrometry, LCMS-MS. 
This method is usually very expensive and should be used in limited cases only. Therefore, you should always focus on the material risk assessment. Who we are. Complimarket is a Munich-based company with a focus on offering software solutions and consulting and training services to help your company to comply with material, product, and sustainability regulations in the EU and US. We ensure a compliant supply chain and save suppliers and manufacturers a valuable time and effort. Our company can help you here by our new innovative software to calculate the material risk according to IEC 62321 standard of your bill of materials. It is very simple. You upload your bill of materials and the risk of presence of PFAS in each part of your bill of materials will be assessed. The module can also check the material risk for other regulations like ROS, R-E-A-C-H-S-V-H-C-R-E, -E, A-C-H-X-X-V-I-I, -I, Persistent Organic Pollutants Regulation, and T, a CS Section 6. Please write us an email at complimarket at complimarket.com and book your call with us to understand more how can we solve PFAS problem for your company and save you hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars.